We're back. Uh, welcome to Parenting with DBT, the skill. I'm here with a number of guests. I have... How do I point at it? I'm trying to do this. We have Mr. Keyboard. And we also have uh, the guitar up there. Am I a musician, you say? No, I'm not. This is somebody else's stuff. Okay, welcome to Parenting with DBT. Parents, have you ever noticed that on some days you are more likely to flip out and cause a scene than on other days? I have. I tend to be at my best on Monday, maybe Tuesday. Thursday or Friday, not as good. These things are called emotional vulnerabilities uh, based on the way we're taking care of ourselves or what we're doing or not doing. We are more susceptible to emotional dysregulation and being an emotion mind and making impulsive choices. So something to understand is this concept of emotional vulnerabilities. Emotional vulnerabilities just means how likely we are to have emotional dysregulation based on what's going on. How do we prevent it? Well, in the emotional regulation module, we have a bottom line skill. And when I say bottom line skill, I mean this is a skill that I try to teach teenagers and adolescents first, and it's really important that parents know it. Not only so that they can help their adolescent or child, but also so that they can help themselves. And this is ABC Police. So this is an acronym that is a little creative because not every word starts with the letter in the acronym, but it's a good, it's a good skill. So here we go. Okay, so first we're going to start with A. A. There it is. The A stands for accumulate positive emotions or experiences. Uh, each day we should do something that makes us happy and it can be a little thing. For example, today in the wild I saw a turtle and I enjoyed seeing a turtle and that little turtle brought me joy. Every single one of us has something that we can do each day that just brings us a little bit of joy. Now there's two forms of accumulate positive emotions or experiences. We'll say experiences for now. Um, there's the short term, which is seeing a turtle, petting a dog, uh, a lot of animal stuff. Unless you're not an animal, then it can be, or look, unless you don't like animals, then you can be watching a video, it can be uh, time with a friend, it can be texting a friend a few times, that kind of thing. So, so there's that. Um, but in the long run, we can make changes to our life that can lead us to having more happiness than we have. For example, I realized that I don't enjoy working in an office, so I don't work in an office. Um, I learned that I need a lot of alone time in order to be happy. Now I get a lot of alone time. Uh, our our long-term accumulate positive experiences don't necessarily happen overnight, but we can gear our lives to where we're moving towards that. So the B, Bs are hard. So the B stands for build mastery. Doing things each day that make it more likely that we are going to improve, like doing things that we improve at. So this can be, for example, swimming laps in a pool. Start off swimming five, then maybe swim six, then swim eight, or lifting weights and increasing the weight, or learning a language and getting better at learning that language. Things that you can do that you get better and better at is a good way to take care of ourselves day by day. C is cope ahead. C's are easy. 
C's is cope ahead. Coping ahead is when we take a moment to think about what's going to be difficult about our day or our week, and we make appropriate plans for how to cope with it. So, for example, I don't like getting my blood drawn, and I knew I needed to get my blood drawn. So before I go, I like take care of myself, I drink water, I stretch, I go in, I have a plan, instead of being just totally caught off guard. Um, and that's cope ahead. So then the please are ways that we take care of our body, right? So P, I like to say, stands for physical illness. This is a little different than how you'll find it in the book. P stands for physical illness, like treat physical illness. You'll notice that when you're when you have a cavity, you have a hangnail, you have an ingrown toenail, um, you have a headache, um, you're sick, you have a sore throat. All of these things tend to make us more irritable. Treating physical illness means that when we are not feeling very well, we take the appropriate time to take care of ourselves, and we don't ignore it because ignoring physical illness tends to make us more susceptible to emotional breakdowns, panic attacks, being flooded with intense feelings of shame or guilt or depression and it also can cause us to blow up and flip out uh the l which is i think i'm the only one that calls l this because it was taught to me by adolescents at a treatment center um is lather so l stands for lather this means shower wash yourself take care of yourself appropriately uh don't skip showers um you know do things that make you clean, and that's good. Uh, e stands for eat. Eat full meals. Eat whole meals. Eat a healthy breakfast. Eat a nice, eat nice snacks. Eat a healthy dinner. Eating's good. Um, there's a lot of emotional issues behind eating for a lot of people. Um, traditionally, though, the idea is that you want to put healthy, wholesome food into your body. And you want to eat mindfully. Um, that way you're able to take care of yourself in an appropriate way because everyone's different. Uh, the A stands for avoid mood-altering drugs and um, take medications as prescribed. So this idea of substances entering our body, we don't want substances to enter our body that are going to cause our mood to be different or are going to change the way we think or process things. Um, it can be quite tempting to inebriate ourselves or to become intoxicated with drugs. Um, this can be marijuana. It can be other harmful drugs. It can be alcohol. I am an advocate of not doing these things. And if you do these things, uh, I'm talking about marijuana or drinking, if you do these things recreationally, um, make sure you have very tight parameters and that it's actually working for you and that that's okay. Um, and then, of course, the medication that's prescribed to you, you want to take those medications the way they're prescribed. And I've always said that if you have difficulty with a type of medication, um, take the time to talk with your psychiatrist about it and visit and say why you don't think this medication is working or say why you don't want to take this medication. Don't just stop taking it or taking it as needed when it's prescribed to be taken every day. You want to follow the label on the bottle. You want to let your doctor know if you don't think it's working. And, you know, the key things here are talk to the doctor, follow the directions. Don't take in those other substances that don't have a doctor or directions. Side note, I know that at times marijuana can have a doctor that monitors it or does whatever, and I think that's good. Um, okay, uh, the S stands for sleep. Sleep hygiene is a really important thing. If you're struggling with sleep, address that. I know people who have gone for a long time without having proper sleep, and that is a top priority. We need our sleep sleep helps us function in a much more effective way some people sleep nine eight hours some people are more as i yawn some people are more functional sleeping um six or seven it's okay gonna be pretty rare to find somebody who thrives on 
three. Okay. Um, and then E stands for exercise. Exercising is great. It makes you feel good. You stay in shape. It's good for the body. And traditionally, we are less apt to blow up and have a lot of emotional problems if we're properly exercising our body. And there you go. That's ABC Please. All of these things are just ways that we take care of ourselves. And this is ways that we, these are all ways that we keep ourselves from having very intense emotional regulation, dysregulation. And it keeps us from doing things very impulsively that just create problems long term. So this is Parenting with DBT. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, like and subscribe. Take care. And it's always good to see you. Bye-bye.